that I was not comfortable having inside of my house. It was not Josh Brolin, okay? This was not Los Angeles. Okay, here we go. Shoe lives. <laughs> He was like, you guys want some of these? I got I got one inch, two inch, three inch, seven inch. Shoe lifts are kind of crazy, right? Because they got to also be the right size for your feet, right? That's crazy. It's like a four-dimensional shoe. You got to be like, hey, can I get a size 12, six-inch shoe lift? Oh, all what what the hell is what have you got like um big arches or something like that? Do you, can you get shoe lifts that have insoles? Can you get like a Dr. Scholl's shoe lift? I don't even know. Like I it seems like a serious engineering problem. There's just three dimensions? What are you talking about? Cuz it's a you got length and width but then like it's a it's not a square or a rectangle right so like it you've also got a like a, a cubic function to represent the shape of your foot and then you've got a, a height in order to get the lift in there that's like that's four dimensions that's four dimensional that's a variable not a dimension the hell is the what's the difference it's a variable, not a dimension. It's like a linear equation. What the hell is a linear equation? It's just an equation of a line, right? It's like a y equals mx plus b, sort of, Marty. I can do, you saw me do it in school. I can still do uh, substitution and elimination. My knowledge of fourth grade biology is a little whack. Bro, be dead. Okay, there we go. Y equals MX plus B has four variables, but it's in two dimensions. You know what? That's a great point. Now that I think about it. That's pretty true. The only thing that's not a variable in that damn equation is the plus. Hey, Han Solo. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. I want you to know, by the way, Han Solo, every time I go off about sports gambling, I do think of the collateral damage in chat. I think of Han Solo. I have no personal problems with the sports gamblers. My problem is not with the, the people on draft champions, uh, you know, adding a little extra spice to their weekend. My problem is with the the uh, gambling entertainment industrial complex that has completely taken over all marketing in sports over the past 12 months. I feel it every time. I'm not judging you. I'm, I'm judging... Well, really, I'm judging Sportsnet. The Canadian Sports Network. As long as I'm in your head, I'm happy. Fair enough. You, you got me on that one. Go reroll the item. There was an item? Seller one? How, what, how the hell did we get the dog bone? What don't you like about sports gambling? I mean, oh, because of Eden's blessing. You're absolutely right. I do believe in, in personal responsibility. I'm not necessarily suggesting that sports gambling should be illegal and i do think that there are people out there that have like a, ooh, a healthy relationship with it you know they bet a, a small amount of money and they use it to enhance their enjoyment of sports rather than like the gambling being the main draw but i also i basically look at it and i think it's this is anti-fun but also, I think it's a good way to look at it. I simply look at it through like a more statistical mindset where I'm like, I mean, literally, 
Well, I, you know what? I mean, there's a couple of things, okay, that, that get me about it. One of them is that it's, it's gambling, which always produces an expected value negative to what you put into it. So I, I, I think that most people are aware of that. I do think that some people are quote-unquote aware of it, but don't really understand it. The other thing is that I feel like most people, when they gamble on like a slot machine or something like that, on some level, they're like, over time, I'm maximizing my odds of losing, but just clinging to the idea that I, one day I'm going to hit that progressive jackpot or something. Sports gambling, bizarrely, and, and I know that there are some professional sports gamblers, but I mean, there's also professional hedge fund managers, even though there's an efficient market uh, theory by Fama and French has, has been largely statistically validated. Um, you know, I, I think that sports betting gives the people the illusion of skill. That, like, if you were simply good at sports betting, you could beat the odds. Because all you have to do is know, like, oh, well, they got their backup goalie in tonight, so obviously I'm the second person on earth to hear this news, so I'm just going to bet on uh, the other team. Uh, which I think is not true, I guess. That's, that's my take on it. Especially given that the casino sets the odds based on, you know, the amount of money that is coming on one side of the equation versus the other. I think that it gives the... People have the illusion that, like, if you just were really smart and astutely observant about what was happening in sports, you could beat the house. And I don't believe that that's the case. However, I do think you could um, take advantage of the fact that they're paying like insanely for customer acquisition and you could get like a $250 sign up bonus or something um, and then just place one bet. And if you win, take the money out of the app and never go back. Two bombs and two keys for 15 cents. You know, I hate to say it. I think it's the smart play right now. They make you play through the money before you can withdraw. They thought about everything, man. I mean, I, I kind of look at it like... Um, trying to think of the example. I do look at it like... And this is mostly just interesting from a psychological standpoint. There, in investing, there's a lot of literature that suggests essentially the more people trade, the more they lose. Which actually makes a lot of sense when you remember that until recently, it, it actually cost you money to make each trade. And I feel like sports betting is kind of like similar in the sense that, I mean, it's, it's different in the sense that, like, literally it's kind of guaranteed that over time, like, you can't realistically get more money out than you put in, otherwise the casino is going to go out of business. But it's it seems to me that it's one of those things where, like, like, you can get the illusion that you're good at sports gambling, and that could psychologically lead you down a dark path. I know there's people out there that are just like pure, like not to be rude, but like pure idiots um, that are like, I'm really good at roulette. But like, you know, those people, we can't save them. I, th I think that otherwise fairly rational people could be like, no, thank you. Could be like, you know what? I know a lot about sports, so I'm going to put some money in this. And then like, I think maybe, I mean, this is all just like straw manning in my head, right? But like... I, I almost worry that, like, the worst thing that could happen if you got into sports gambling is that you're confident to begin with, and then you win, like, three bets in a row. I think that could, like, set something in your personality where you're like, oh, I'm actually great at this. And then from that point onwards, like, if any loss you experience is just like, no, 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 this is not a regression to the mean. 
This is just temporary until I actually go back to being the greatest sports gambler of all time. So th that's, I guess it, it, to me, the, the issue that I have, well, the main issue that I have with sports gambling is how quickly it became like suffocating in the Canadian sports media, which is fine, you know? It just, it went from like illegal to saturating every ad spot and also like on camera spots in less than a year, which was a, a big change. But then also I do think it's almost like it's got a layer of obfuscation on the gambling side where people were like, no, no, it's not really like, yes, it's wagering, but also like you can consistently win if you're just smart. And I'm like, I don't know. That I, obviously that's not true. <laughs> I mean, like for maybe like the one in 10,000 people or something like that. Sure, maybe. But like, that's not you. I've seen you drink a cup of glue in high school, right? Like. So that's my um, that's my take. A cup. Well, you know, the or like paint water or something like that. And I saw people say, what about poker? But I think poker is like a different business, right? Like, I think it's mathematically valid that you can have a positive EV in poker. The casino makes his money on the buy-in to begin with. And then over a large enough time scale, if you're like good at poker, which I am not, um, you could have a positive EV because you're taking money from the other players. You're, you know, if you, if you were playing against a, a plant that the casino put on the table, then it would be a different story. But, uh, you know, the casino, I think, is just happy to have you pay like a thousand bucks to enter the tournament. And then they just supply a dealer and like a bathroom. But even then, I would still rather own a casino than be good at poker, I think. That seems like the dream. The best the best place to be in gambling is to be the person who owns a casino for sure. Why don't you then? I don't know. It seems like it probably costs like hundreds of millions of dollars. <laughs> it's a damn scam. It used to be you could just get like a, you could have a big boat or something like that. And then you could just put like a shitty roulette table on the boat. People would just come onto your boat, get hammered, and then lose all their money on a roulette table. Nowadays, you gotta, oh, uh, so you gotta have pit bosses and security and stuff like that. It's it's all a damn scam to keep the little guy down. Basically, they don't want you running your own homemade casino anymore. You ever see Molly's game? You ever see the TikTok about how to make a million dollars a month? And one of the steps was own and run an online casino. I'm telling you, dude, the the TikTok rise and grinds generation, they're doing they're doing some good stuff. I did, I dude, I was like, I saw one of like the funniest TikToks. It had to be over a year ago now, but I don't think I mentioned it. But it was like this 16 year old kid being like ways to make money as a 16 year old, and it always starts with something insane, right? It's always like. Most of my friends are too lazy to do anything and they just want to like be kids, but I'm an entrepreneur. And then it was like step one, go to Craigslist. Step two, search vending machine. And step three, this is what you're going to look for. And it was like those old red vending machines with like a glass cylinder on top. And he's like, you could probably find like an eight rack of these old vending machines for like 250 bucks. Okay, so then he bought the, the eight rack of the glass cylinder vending machines. And he said, okay, then I go to step, step five. I go to 7-Eleven. I buy a bunch of candy. Skittles, Mike and Ike's, M&M's. You get the idea. You, you get the idea. Then I just fill them all up. And then I like put the price tag on it. It's 25 cents for each like handful of candy. Then you're going to call around to like local business parks and office buildings and see if they will let you put your candy vending machines on their property. And I'm like, well, I'm starting this. I already had about 10 problems with this to begin with. And uh, I, I've just got another one for you. But then he's like, finally, he got to go into some business park or something. 
And he was like, so I set this up and then every week I just come in and I collect my quarters. And I'm like, dude, don't fuck with us, okay? I'm 33 years old. Don't tell me every week I come in and collect my quarters. Show me the footage. I guarantee you show up there once a month, you crack that shit open and there's like 75 cents in it because like one dude had really low blood sugar one day. That's it. There's no way... <coughs> Pardon me. I'm not suggesting that, like, you're suggesting that every single one of those would make you, like, a thousand dollars a month, because that's insane. I understand that what you're probably suggesting is that if you get, like, 50 of these, um, then you could start to make a reasonable, like, part-time salary or something like that, but come on. You know, as nobody's used, especially in the, in the era of, like, perma-COVID, nobody's putting 25 cents into a glass cylinder to get some damn six Mike and Ikes or something like that and probably also get like hepatitis B. Nobody's doing gotcha pawn loose candy anymore, kid. Sorry, the business has passed you by. But it's a great entrepreneurial idea provided you were born in the 1890s and were able to execute this shit in the 1910s, but... Man. Anyway, long story short, I uh, I don't know how that's gonna like work for uh, I don't know how that's gonna work for him. I am happy, at least having been at the hospital yesterday. I'm happy that we appear to finally be at um, all vending machines are credit card enabled. That's that saved me yesterday. I will say, can I can I give you like a social anxiety moment? I'm in a hospital. They tell me to drink lots of fluids. So I go to the vending machine. I buy myself a can of apple juice, okay? But then I say, there's no place in this hospital where I can drink a can of apple juice because I got to take my mask off. So as soon as I take my mask off, someone's going to be like, hey, put that mask back on. You're in a damn hospital. And I got to be like, sorry, sorry. So I just went to the bathroom and then took off my mask and chugged the can of apple juice in the bathroom and then <laughs> threw it threw it in the in the garbage and then put my mask back on and left i didn't know what else to do man it's a perfect crime i didn't know like what i what i could do what what else are you supposed to do in that situation Just drink it next to the vending machine? With my mask off? Are you crazy? They're gonna send me to the damn chokey. Go outside? Yeah, but then when you go back inside, you've gotta go through like an interrogation to get back in. It's like some 75 year old lady is like, do you have an appointment today? I've already been through it like 10 times. And I'm like, well, I had an appointment today, but then I also was admitted to the hospital. I'm pre Gigantifies you for 30 seconds. Okay, but this does break the game, but it's also very good, right? Pull mask down, sip, put it back up. I'm not a sipper. I'm, I, I, I mean, I chugged that can of apple juice in like less than eight seconds for sure. Enough talk, it's time to chug. It's time to chug! No. It's sipping time. Sure, why not? Dude, this run's okay. Should have just drank it through the mask. Another another awkward moment. The doctor said, I have to take a look at your throat. I said, do you need me to pull my mask down? I know, like, the answer is obviously yes. But for a second, I was like, maybe their flashlight is strong enough that um, it could, like, illuminate through my mask. And then they... Son of a bitch. I just lost all my damage. It's gone. I spent it. I know how it sounds, but like I'm... I have some like trauma associated with the... Sure, why not? 
associated with like taking my mask off because when Kate was in the hospital having our baby, like the nurse was being like real anal of it. She was like, Sir, I see that you have a mask on. I just want you to know that I've seen you touch it with your bare hands. After you've touched it with your bare hands, effectively that means that your mask is as dirty as your hands. So I'm going to need you to reply. And I was like, oh my God. I'm so like, she was like, sir, you're in a hospital. I absolutely need you to take this more seriously. And I'm like, damn girl, I'm just trying to have a baby out here. I'm sorry. But that, okay, you're right. That was 2020. Like... It was, it, it was a slightly different era in terms of how we were dealing with things, for sure. Where did that nurse go to school? I don't know. Later, there was, it did come out that there was a fake nurse in the Vancouver hospital system who had just been pretending to be a nurse for like 10 years. And I, was, I saw her photo and I was like... I don't think that that's her. But it could have just been like, a, like she could have done something with her hair. She was a fake teacher at my school. It was like a big news story. It was like 30 people uh, brought charges against her. They're like, yeah, I was about to die in the hospital. And then it turns out my nurse wasn't even a nurse. She was just like a lady. Wouldn't she be like a real nurse if she faked it for 10 years? It turns out in the eyes of the law, the answer is no. They're, they're apparently pretty serious about the, about the qualifications that you need to have in order to be like a real nurse. I'm fucking huge, dude. Look at this. Do you just walk into things with this, or does walking into things hurt me? What? It does not hurt me. Okay. Oh, dude, let's go. Get killed, you piece. I don't need the sun card. Dude, I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna get like half of a charge for this. Give me some more enemies. I'm returning to normal size. That sucked pretty bad. I could really use like small rock, man. I could use, like, any damage upgrade at all. More curse rooms. Okay, now we're talking. I was thinking about that fake nurse when the nurse took my blood yesterday, and she's like, sorry, sir, that's not a vein, that's a tendon. This ain't a vein, it's a goddamn tendon. This ain't a vein, it's a... It didn't hurt that bad. I, I'm pretty strong. There's no vein, that's my ass. Dude, I should have tried that. Historically, I do have to say, I feel like my family doctor has a sense of humor. Sometimes she'll laugh at my jokes. Once you get inside of the hospital, they tend to be a little bit more serious. It really harshes the vibe a little bit, to be quite frank. Yeah, I don't know. I feel I feel better today. There's there's no doubt about that. I'm not an idiot. Like I know Oh my god. The like the antibiotics are like they don't work immediately. Like, you know, it it's like shaving your chest, you know? You're not going to get all the bacteria on the first or the second dose. You know, that's why I've got 14 doses here. But I'm, I'm a little bit picked up here. I'm feeling a little bit picked up for sure. Oh, oh. Yeah, you got to take the whole thing. Yeah, I know. I'm done with the with the medical concern trolling. 
NL, antibiotic resistance is a very serious thing. Yeah, I know. I know. Please make sure. Don't. You absolutely have to run the whole course. Yes, I know. My pharmacist told me that as well. I'm going to follow my pharmacist's advice on this. How'd you have diarrhea for three weeks and not die? Now, this is where you're going to have to allow me some egocentrism. Um, I honestly think that I have a stronger will to live than the average person. I'm, I, I guess in a way I am suggesting that I'm built different. Like for, especially when it was at its peak, when I was having diarrhea like once every 90 minutes, I was drinking like a pint of water every time I went to the bathroom. I don't think, I think a lot of people would simply have chosen to die. They would have been like, I'm, it, that's an uncomfortable amount of water to drink. I'm just going to skip a couple of waters and then they would be dead, I think. I refused. I said, I don't want to die. Every, I, I, every time I've gone to the grocery store, I've bought like, you know, Gatorade. Is it, it, is it in you? I bought apple juice. I bought apple juice thinking it was apple juice. Actually, it was peach juice. Whatever. Drink like a liter and a half of that shit a day. So that's, that's how I didn't die. Is basically I, 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 refu I at least refuse to die of dehydration. That's maybe an oversimplification, but... Magic fingers. Incredible. You know what? We gotta make some bold decisions here. You could have also just held it in. That's the other thing I didn't mention. But yeah, in, I guess you could have just been like, ah, I really have to go to the bathroom, but I'm just like not going to do it right now. Because like, I think I've gone too much. Did you drink tea too? I'm going to need you to shut up immediately. The so people who say, oh, why didn't you just eat rice? Ooh. Did you drink some tea? Did you try the go mad diet? This one, this course of medicine and treatment is a huge dub for modern medicine. I would like, I, I'm dedicating today's stream to the existence of the modern medical industry. I had a CT scan yesterday. You think a caveman ever got a, a CT scan? I don't think so. Damn machine was talking to me and everything. It was going like, hold your breath. Breathe normally. It was, it was the damn future, man. It was like being at Epcot. Then my doctor called me with the results and was like, they weren't conclusive. And I was like, all right, maybe modern medicine still has some room to grow. But... <laughs> I appreciate the attempt, at least. No, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you! Uh, they did CT scan that mummified uh, caveman. We produced uh, the one sound that we thought it could make. Uh! Classic. Great bit. This is laborious, man. Thank you. That's I, honestly, that's all I could ask for. Thank you for something. Oh my God. <laughs> oh man. Whew. Anyway. Can 
Chubby Emu make a YouTube video based on your struggle? Yeah, if we ever get like, you know, like at the end of Contagion, they show you that like the thing that started it all was like a uh, industrial truck knocked over a mango tree and then like a bunch of bats flew out of it and then the bats pooped in like a livestock area where like a pig ate the poop and then the pig got shipped to like a casino uh kitchen where the chef was like butchering it and then the chef just wipes his hands on his shirt and then shakes hands with gwyneth paltrow and you're like oh snap dude if we ever get to like reverse engineer what caused this then then absolutely you have my permission this man accidentally ate a cat turd you won't believe what happened next Help me. Did they give you an idea of where it came from? I don't think it's like what they do. I think I need to hire like a cop for that. I don't think it's like... And the bacteria had um, barbecue sauce on it. <laughs> it's got weird... The, the stool sample returned a strong uh, positive for the marker known as barbecue sauce. Why not? The whole run's already fucked up anyway. Let's send it, man. Anyway. Debs 2? What the? We got nothing going for us. You can't harm me, just so you know. I am unharmable. You can't hurt me, not with my cheese helmet. At least let me get like four rooms. I'll take it. It could be worse. Eventually, we'll be able to fight Illness's Magic School Bus style. Dude, honestly, the more I watch the Magic School Bus, the more I'm like, Miss Frizzle should actually lose her teaching license. She's actually not a good teacher. Hey, Hungry Skeleton 15, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you, thank you. I know it's like, it's millennial, like, um,. I don't even know what to describe it as. But basically, they're like, oh, I wish all our teachers were like Miss Frizzle. When I was a kid, I had a teacher. Her name was Miss Frizzle. And she taught me to take chances, make mistakes, get messy. Nowadays, my kid's teacher is just trying to teach him about boring shit like algebra. Miss Frizzle is a damn menace, man. If you watch the show with adult eyes, does she teach the kids? Yeah. She does. She's very enthusiastic about her job. However, she's missing a very important element of being a competent teacher, which is not risking the physical health and safety of your students every day. First episode, they go to outer space. No astronaut training, no nothing. Arnold dies by suicide by taking his helmet off on Pluto to show Janet what's gonna happen to her if she doesn't abandon all of her rocks from Mercury that she's trying to bring back as proof that she was in outer space. Second episode, they go inside Arnold's body uh, uh, to learn about um, the digestive system. Well, really about a lot of the systems, but they go inside Arnold's body. Okay, not as bad, right? They're not in outer space. No, wait, until they're in the stomach and the bus starts fucking dissolving and all the kids are like, Miss Frizzle, what the fuck? The bus is dissolving. There's like a hole in the floor now. Like my feet are dangling over the stomach. And Miss Frizzle's like, that's because the, Ralphie, that's because the stomach has incredibly potent hydrochloric acid in it. And, uh, okay, but like, how's the bus getting out of this situation? Anyway, they got out of the situation. I can't remember if it's the third episode where they go inside Ralphie's body when he's sick, but they immediately get uh, attacked and identified by Ralphie's immune system 
absolutely coated in like T proteins and then swallowed by white blood cells. I don't even remember how they got out of that one. And then possibly the most horrifying experience of all, they go, uh, they, I don't know why they had to sneak in for this one. It seems like they could have just asked nicely and maybe gotten a tour, but they're at a bakery and uh, they go undercover to see the molecular interactions that happen when you bake a cake. Only, oops, the bus ended up getting stuck in the damn cake pan and placed in the oven for 350 for 35 damn minutes. The only reason they got out of it, Miss Frizzle wears one of the Icelandic volcanologist suits and they're like, the kids are on the bus going, and then they see Miss Frizzle like coming through the waves of heat, like, and saves them. Uh, I don't, I, I think she just gets on the bus and then she's like, and then it flies away or something like that. But she, like, in the first four episodes, she almost loses all of the kids every episode. It's crazy. I would, like, my kid would not be going back after they, it, like, if my kid came home from school and she was like, oh, we were in outer space today. I'd be like, oh, that's cool, honey. And she, then I'd be like, uh, do you have any proof? And she'd be like, yeah, check out this photo of Arnold's fucking frozen head with his amethyst eyes after he took his helmet off. I would be like, let me get this straight. You flew to outer space today and a kid died? She's not going back to that school. She's, she's going into a safe public school somewhere with like a normal teacher where a field trip is like you go to the cheese curd factory or something. I don't want to send my kid to school that all day at work in the back of my mind is like, you all, the only thing that's running in my head is, you might get baked into a pie on the magic school bus. Walk the river of lava. How about just like silent reading? They don't do a whole lot of silent reading on the magic school bus. That's a pretty important skill. Just to make your day complete, you might get baked into a pie. Next thing that you know, you're thinking, burr, 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 octopus in the neighborhood? No thank you, dude. No thank you. You watched it recently? Yeah, I watched like a shitload of it. You, I don't even want it to. I got way too many strong opinions on Peppa Pig, man. That show jumped the shark. I didn't even realize. Peppa Pig season one through four is like, Peppa gets a new toothbrush. You know, it's like pedestrian normal shit. Last episode I saw of Peppa Pig, Peppa Pig lost her boots, okay? She couldn't find her boots. You know how they solved the problem? Daddy Dog built a fucking rocket ship and sent her to the moon unsupervised. That is not something that happens in the first few seasons of Peppa Pig, where they're... Like, the standard problem on a Peppa Pig episode was like, I lost my stuffed animal! And then, like, at the end, it's like, oh, it turns out Daddy Pig accidentally, like, put it behind the radiator or something. Peppa Pig went to the fucking moon. And then I saw another episode this morning. Um... Mr. Potato had a helium balloon that got overinflated. Excuse me. Uh, so he was floating into the sky. Miss Rabbit got in her rescue helicopter to save him. She flies up above the balloon, puts on autopilot. The helicopter flies away. She lands on top of the balloon and then says, don't worry, I'll just let out all of the air in the balloon. So then they let out all the air in the balloon. They're like a thousand feet above the city center. Um, it goes like... And then they float down to the earth below and everyone's fine. Like there's some serious suspension of disbelief that has to happen if you watch Peppa Pig in 2022. It's the first few episodes. I I love them because they're just like a little slice of life. Peppa Pig's friend or like her family has a young baby. It's so I would look at wow this young baby won't get to sleep. 
How do you normally get it to sleep? Oh, we walk it around the house in the stroller for a couple hours. How do you get it to sleep? Oh, weirdly, we try to like run the vacuum cleaner and then it that seems to help. You know, that's nice. Uh, that's relatable stuff. New episodes of Peppa Pig are like, uh, Peppa Pig uh, goes to Jupiter to meet uh, the monolith from 2001 The Space Odyssey. Like, it's it's just, it's too much, man. But my baby is fully Peppa Pigged right now. She, like, she does not want to talk about Sesame Street. Although last night before bed, I didn't tell my wife this yet, but last night before bed, she started telling me an outlandish series of lies. She said, Daddy... I saw Elmo today. And I said, oh, did you saw Elmo today on the TV? And she said, no. And I said, where did you see Elmo? And she said, in my room. And I said, did mommy see Elmo? And then she very deftly said, no. And I was like, okay, because I could have cross-referenced that pretty quickly. And then I said, did... Um, like she was holding an elephant stuffed animal. I was like, did elephant see Elmo? And she was like, yes. And I was like, damn, she's good. And then I said, oh, we're at full health. Then I said, what did Elmo say? And she said, um, Elmo's song. And I was like, great answer. For anybody that's not familiar, Elmo on Sesame Street sings a song that goes, this is the song, la 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 la, Elmo song. La 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 la, la 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 la, Elmo song. La la la, la 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 la. It's a good one. Did you, and every time it comes up on Spotify, it pisses me off. Because Elmo sings a whole verse like that, right? It's all just la 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 la. Big Bird's there too. He goes, let me try. This is the song, la 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 la, Big Bird song, and then I swear to God, Snuffleupagus goes, um, it worked. And I'm like, yeah, of course it works. It's, it's just the la 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 la. Oh, it's the same damn words. Of course it works, Snuffleupagus, you idiot. This is the song, la 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 la, Snuffy song. I like it! Anyway. Apparently it's like, I know how this sounds, but it's like a good, um... It's a good sign when a toddler is able to lie. It, it's like a indicative of a, a milestone in their social development. This is like, I, I don't know, I mean, the greatest lie we ever told as a society is that, like, lying is bad. That the net effect of lying is probably good on society. Sometimes the truth is painful and is not worth experiencing, depending on the severity of the situation. <clears throat> like if your friend comes to you and they've already bought a like a dress and they say, do you like it? What are you going to say? No. You just, they already, they obviously like it. They already bought it. The barrier to them returning the dress, they're not, they're, the only thing they're going to get out of it is store credit anyway. Nobody's going to give you a full refund for clothes and cash these days. Are you seeing the economy? You just say, wow, that looks great. Most, that's, it, maybe it's a weird take, but I feel like in general, most lies are probably good. Like, they, they probably produce a net positive effect on society. <clears throat> Your mother-in-law spends all afternoon cooking you uh, a food. You eat it. It tastes bad. She says, do you like it? You say, oh my god, it's so good. Why would you tell the truth in that situation? Some situations you should tell the truth. A lot of situations you should tell the truth. Many situations you should lie. <laughs> That's at least my take on it. If you lie, or if you tell the truth, maybe she'll cook better next time. That's a very naive look, I think. Once, once someone hits like 25, what you see is what you get, man. 
It's not. Nobody's like. I, the only thing you're gonna do is turn somebody into a, an enemy instead of a friend. So, I, you know, in this mother in law situation, my mother in law is like 63 years old. If she cooked me something and it didn't taste good, and then I said, like, oh, it tastes horrible. The only thing I'm going to do is hurt her feelings. It's not like she's going to be like, Thank you for your prompt and honest feedback, Redditor. I'm going to enroll in a cooking class immediately in order to solve this perceived problem with my life because I got fucking nothing else going on ever. Um, so I really appreciate the, your... I understand that life... Basically, the pursuit of life is to just constantly be ironing out your flaws at all times and never actually have time to enjoy yourself. So I appreciate you adding another thing onto my already incredibly cramped to-do list. No, you psycho. You just say, wow, this is really good. And you, you move on. Yeah, you, you well, you honestly like say thank you for making me food. It's such a, it's a, a vibe to not be having to cook for myself. Wow, this is really good. But next time, why don't you add more salt? You so my mother-in-law, born and raised in Korea, moved to Canada when she was uh, in her forties. She cooks me some Korean food for lunch. And then me, a white guy, lived one year in Korea, takes one bite, and you're gonna, I'm gonna be like, mm, maybe a little more gochugaro next time. You listen to yourself for like two fucking seconds? That's insane. I'm not gonna do that. Mmm, I think you need to add more melchi next time. You just say that tastes delicious. Thank you so much. And then wh what do you do if she cooks it for you again? You fucking eat it and say, wow, that's really good. Because you're like an adult. <laughs> Maybe you gotta eat that shit like once every eight months for the next 20 years. If it bothers you that much, you just eat as much as you can and then you go to McDonald's drive-thru on the way home. Welcome to adulthood, motherfucker. Strap in, you got like 60 years of this shit. It's a marathon, not a sprint. You go around telling the truth to everybody. You trying to speed run adulthood? I wish you the best of luck. Let me know how that works out for you. There's an enemy somewhere. Oh, there's a... Oh my god, it's like two spiders. Holy cow. I'm so over enemies that spawn other smaller enemies, enemies that disappear, enemies that, that appear uh, over gaps in the level. I saw the Elvis movie and decided Elvis is the first speedrunner. Okay, can I c c speak on that? Can you speak on that? Nope. Okay. Well, that's fine. Sometimes people do want to hear the truth. Well, here's what I here's my take. Okay. You're you're at your friend's house. She pulls a dress out of her closet and says, "What do you think of this? That's amazing. You have such a great eye for fashion." You're clothes shopping with your friend. She steps out of the dressing room wearing the very same dress. She says, "What do you think of this?" You go. I'm not sure it really is a good fit for you. I think we should keep looking. It's all about the... You, you gotta look at the situation. Why lie in the first situation? I, I can only take this question as sincere, so I'm gonna answer it sincerely. Someone who has already purchased the product and is excited to show it off to you probably does not want your honest feedback because they've already purchased the product for themselves. What they want you to do is to make them feel better about the purchase itself and say, wow, you made a great decision.
depends on if you can return it. You guys aren't gonna make it. I'm just... <laughs> just take good advice, okay? Not everything is an invitation to argue the edge case, okay? People argue edge cases as if they're the base case. And then they think about the base case as if it's the edge case. Makes me sick. It's actually relevant? It's like, it's literally relevant, which is what's just annoying. Is that there's like, li it's not functionally relevant at all. Unless you, like, you're the kind of person who like has arguments with your friends and that's like, let, let me guess, you all wear suits to your freshman year uh, lectures. And then uh, you all go out to the campus pub together and order chocolate milks. But like most people, there's there's like a certain repartee that comes with um, social interaction. And it's, I assert something, maybe I'm complaining about something that happened in my life, or maybe I'm saying this is the way the world is, or something like that. Uh, and then the other person says, true, true, that's pretty true, unless it really violates their moral standards of how they see the world. And then they, having validated my assertion, then they go, hey, here's my assertion about something else. And then I go, you know what? Because you validated my assertion earlier, I'm gonna validate your assertion now because I know how good that can feel. And that's, I think that's the spirit of most human interaction. Okay, this is going a bit too far. Okay, then stop asking about it. <laughs> this is not how normal conversations go. It's not one person speaking to 10,000 people and then fielding a thousand bad faith questions from chat designed to tilt everybody. Usually, uh, you know, one person would just say something. Everybody else would be like, okay, I, I either agree with that and say I agree with it or I disagree with that and say, well, maybe, and then... And then we move on. We just wait for the, the bacon-wrapped scallops to show up. And then if I'm like, hmm, these bacon-wrapped scallops are so good, and then somebody at the, in the circle at the, you know, Democratic nominee party is like, I actually don't think they're, they're that good. I think these are pretty mid. I would be like, okay. Would you like an autograph? You seem to be a fan of mine. Did you really, did you really come here to argue? This is politics, man. We're not here to argue. We're here to bump elbows. Well, maybe is the IRL minus two. True. I use well, maybe a lot. Smash marker. Isaac three. That's fair. <laughs> 